Good morning. Good morning. Welcome on this beautiful Sunday. Um, again, for those who might not know me, I am Pastor Getz. Uh, Pastor uh, Long should be back next week. Praise the Lord. Um, we welcome you t today. Um, is with that, uh, we begin with our opening hymn, uh, 684. We are gathered this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. 
Almighty God has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As an ordained servant of the word and by Christ's authority, I therefore forgive you of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading comes to us from Deuteronomy. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people 
for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you are more in number than the, any other people that the Lord has set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all people. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers, that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Therefore know that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps commandments and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is the word of the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do wrong. But those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. Glory be to Father, and to Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Now, will he not also graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it that condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God. Please rise. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. And Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it on shore, sat down, and sorted out the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out, separate the evil from the righteous, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? And they said to him, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house 
who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Last week was the parable of the wheat and the tares. In a field, in the field, in the world, Christ sows wheat. Faith, belief, Christians. Satan also sows in that field. He sows weeds, the weeds of unbelief and those who reject Christ. And at the consummation of the age, at Christ's return, there will be a universal ingathering, a universal resurrection unbelief to a hellish end, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Faith, on the other hand, will rise to a heavenly end as the angels gather the children of God to shine like the sun in a new heaven and a new earth prepared for us. Jesus' message was clear. 
the ongoing presence of sin and evil in the world, the wheat and, and, the, and, the, and the weeds growing together, may seem like God is taking his time as there is evil around us, as there is death around us, as there is sickness around us. It may seem that God is slow, but God is never late. Hope sustains us in Christ's coming. In the midst of the reality of life in this world, Christ reigns and his purpose is only good for us, his children. This brings us to today's parable of hidden treasure, of valuable pearl and rotten fish. The treasure and the, the pearl have several points in common. In both, we have a man or a merchant. He found something of great value. He went away. He sells everything. And then he purchases that treasure or that pearl. But there's also some differences in the detail. God's reign is like a treasure hidden in a field. Joyous at his discovery, a man hid it again and went and sold everything and purchased the field. The first difference is, presumably, the treasure was left in the field. This parable focuses on the treasure left behind, left behind like we are. It focuses on us right here in this world. And the other element is the joy at the heart of Jesus' reign. What I mean is Jesus specifically tells us of his joy. In the Gospel of John speaks of his joy as being made complete in the love he has in his followers. Our Lord reminds us not to become myopic, not to see only the weeds. We are his children. We are his great joy. Joy that would strengthen him as he would journey to the cross. The joy and rejoicing over the faithful puts a perspective on the common activity between the two. Jesus departs. He leaves heaven. He becomes a man. He suffers and he dies to purchase us. But his death was not just for us, the saved, the Christians. The man bought the whole field. He sold everything. Jesus gave up himself. He gave up as King of Kings, Lord of Lords, very God of very God, as we confess. He had given up everything into death to possess a greater treasure, all of fallen mankind and specifically us, buried in that field, mired in this world. The second parable brings it home. One parable is presumably out of many pearls, but this one is so valuable and so desirable that our Lord would give up everything to possess it. Jesus again is telling us what a treasure we are, as in the Old Testament, a treasured possession of God the joy that we would bring to him, the promise that he will give all to possess us. Reassurance that in a weedy field, in a world running rampant with unbelief and violence and evil, we are safe, hidden in Christ. We are a treasured pearl to be plucked out of a dying world. And this brings us to rotten fish. So far the parables of Matthew focus on God's reign in the world with a reference to the ever-present opposition, unbelief and evil, and faith, the hope that we have in God's care as we, his children, receive it. The parable of the dragnet tells us of God's reign at the end of time, at the universal resurrection, the resurrection of all who have ever lived. Jesus tells of fishing, I would say more specifically, catching. The dragnet scoops up every fish without discrimination. The fish are separated, not according to kind, not grouper and bass and, and trout, uh, Lutherans and Presbyterians and Baptists. They're all sorted out, not sorted out, according to the fish that are tasty, like a good bass, or rough fish like a carp. He separates the good fish from the bad fish. Now, what's a bad fish? Well, he had told us earlier of two trees. One tree was a good tree that produced good fruit. The other tree was a bad tree that could produce nothing but 
bad fruit. And if you've ever had bad fruit, it's rotten fruit. It's no good for anything. The, the word bad and the word rotten uh, are both the same word in the Greek. The good fish is alive. A rotten fish is dead. I can't help but think of the image down in Florida. They have this thing called the red tide, which is a bloom of algae brought about during the summertime. Uh, and it kills the fish. And the fish wash up on the shore. And if you go down to the beach, there's these dead fish rotting in the sun, and it stinks. That's what Jesus is trying to tell us. Now, talking to the disciples, now in private, Jesus puts a sharp edge on the wheat and the weeds. The devil is sowing death. While heaven rejoices over God's treasured children, Satan feasts on the rotten flesh of unbelief. I wish it was easy to spot as a rotten fish on the Florida beach. Satan is busy dropping little seeds all around us. Jealousy, greed, deceit, backstabbing, etc. You know. But Paul would say, everything I want to do, everything I want to do, I do not do, but everything I do not want to do, that's what I will do. Who will rescue me from this body of death? We are all precious pearls, purchased by our Lord Jesus Christ. And as Paul was rescued by Jesus, we are rescued by Jesus. We are his treasured possession, hidden in the world for now, but Christ is coming and he will gather us to be like shining stars. This is great. But then Jesus adds a zinger at the end. Chapter 13 is called the Kingdom of Heaven chapter. He tells us the Kingdom of Heaven is like, the Kingdom of Heaven is like, the Kingdom of Heaven is like. He starts out with the sower and he goes to the weeds and then he goes to the, the, the uh, mustard seed and the yeast and uh, all the... And then he comes down to the end. He looks at the apostles and says, have you understood all these things? And of course, they answer, yes. The sower, we know, that's where the good soil has, uh, we have, the word has taken root and, and has grown in our hearts. The wheat and the weeds not only explains why the devil is still active around us, but why there is so much unbelief, but it also tells us to take heart. God is caring for us, and in the end, he will come for us. And the treasure and the pearl tell us of the price Jesus would pay to redeem us and how precious we are to him. And the dragnet, the br brutal death, the brutal truth that Satan sows death and decay, but our Lord brings life to his children. He said, have you understood all these things? And they answered, yes. Therefore, he says, I will tell you one last parable. Every teacher who has become a disciple for the advancement of the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. And I can see the disciples standing there going, oh. It's a kind of an allusion, I think, to feeding guests. The, the master of the house, the guest comes and he brings out of his storehouse that which is new and that which is old. Uh, new, fresh bread and good aged wine. Behind it is the word of God, which nourishes us to eternal life. The old, the previous covenant, that is that Jesus would enter into at his baptism, that Jesus would become Israel under the old covenant, and he bears in his body the failure of mankind as pointed out, as he pointed out to Satan, uh, the fail our failure to worship the Lord our God, and only shall he, we serve him. The old hearken back to Jesus' baptism and temptation where Jesus substitutes himself for me. And the new looks to the new covenant. The new covenant in my blood, Jesus said, Jesus' body and blood given unto death for the forgiveness of sins. New, Jesus' fulfillment of that old covenant in his death in satisfaction for our failure to worship only the Lord our God and to serve only him. The new is God's grace demonstrated in faith flowing from God's word and the joy 
of our reign being reunited in eternal life. Do you understand, Jesus asked, yes, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the joy set before him, gave up everything, died for our sins, but also rose again for our life. Amen. Please stand as we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs for the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. have mercy. For the holy Christian church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, its mission, its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has given us to do, and for the unity of spirit and the bond of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the educational institutions of our synod, for our preschools, our day schools and high schools, our colleges and universities, for the seminaries, that those who teach and those who learn in them would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who partake this day in Christ's holy body and blood, that in their eating and drinking they would receive the benefits of forgiveness of sins, the renewal of life, and a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who serve in worthy occupations, professions, arts, sciences, that God would grant them the skill and integrity to perform their responsibility and valued, valued service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God would grant mercy and love and would preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick, especially Heavenly Father, those who we name in our hearts right now. We pray that God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, that they may always remember that the giver of every gift and give him hearty, heartful thanks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sins and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us through your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, from which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. 
This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. may be seated. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen you and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
God's blessings. Uh, does there any announcements from the gathered folks? My only announcement is that I would like to meet with a couple of the elders right after services. We're out there in the narthex. Uh, go in the joy of our Lord and serve him with gladness. <laughs>